today. I would describe it as simple and easy tool to deploy a typo tolerant search bar. So we're gonna make a search bar right now. Um, where do I start? Um, this is this is my this is the documentation and what I'm going to do is go to the installation. Where is the installation? We can do it with Homebrew if you're on Mac, Docker, on Linux, if you want to build the source code yourself or Windows and whatever. But, but I'm going to go with the old fashioned way with the C curl. I'm just going to download the thing and then run it. Right? So I'm going to grab, grab this and. Yeah. So right now it's downloading MediSearch, the executable, on, on my machine. Um, you can do the, the, the same thing on Windows and on, 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 on any server, any Linux server, and it will, it will be the same thing. But basically, right now, I have a MediSearch instance running on my machine, and this is the endpoint for MediSearch, the local host and the port uh, 7700, right? Now the search is actually running, and that's, that's, that's all it is. I just got to download MediSearch, and it's running, ready to use. Um, the now now if you want to use you know add documents add indexes add data search uh, all I have to do is use the use the uh, use the endpoints right uh, but before we go to the endpoints I want to tell that you can you can deploy it on on your clouds there are the, there are um, uh, guides guides on the documentation and on DigitalOcean if you like this platform I'm a big fan of DigitalOcean they do have a marketplace app so you can literally click a button it will give you an instance with maybe search ready but we're not going to do that, 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 that today what, I'm, what we're going to do is we're going to make a view application uh, where did I have that right uh, so I'm going to make a view application to have an interface where we can add and search recipes right so I'm going to do a view create an application called search engine just get the default stuff and while this building I'm going to open my code editor webstorm is always better than VS code um, <laughs> everyone here uses VS Code except me. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna open the project uh, while it's downloading Vue. I'm just gonna open. I, I, I would, I would, I, I'm just not confident in myself to use such a new tool in a demo. All right. I even didn't go with Vue three. I just picked Vue two. You know, I'm just familiar with that and everything. Let's just hope everything will be good. All right. Um, it is still getting downloading view and I have them having the project right here you know before I start I just want <laughs> which one <laughs> right right it, it's almost done with you uh, I'm just gonna remove the linters because they annoy me so much I don't like the lint and Remove all windows. Give me ugly code. You know, those are just all packages that I don't want. All right. Now I have a you know a, a brand new uh, view application. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the JavaScript SDK. This just yarn add mini search. Yeah. Just I think we added it in the yeah. Let's go to search engine and add this package. What I'm doing now is adding the mini search package, the JavaScript the client to my view application. So we can start start using it. Now I can build. All right, view just making everything so slow. This is a standard view app, and let's delete. Let's just delete everything, right? I'm gonna start fresh with nothing, no components, no styles, nothing. Just Google. We're gonna do something better than Google. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> How do I start? I, I all I did so far is ran the search and ran the view application. To start, we need to import first maybe search. Import the import maybe search from maybe search. Right. Um, did you install? Uh, yes, we, I I did I did install it. It's, uh, it's in the package, right? And then next, uh, what, what do we want to do? We want to have an input, right? And then we want to have, actually just an input, and let's just bind it with, uh, let's take with, right? Is this how you bind? Yeah, that's how. Now excuse my old syntax. 
Am I doing it right? Yeah. Good. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, uh, yeah. So as soon and then uh, because I import the middle search, I want as soon as the you know the application mounts to make me a client. I mean, this is where this is my search client will be here. So as soon as the application mounts, and this is just view 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 syntax. Uh, I'm gonna say as soon as the application mounts, give me a new melee search uh, instance, right? And just I'm gonna copy here the endpoint, just the host the configuration. Uh, this endpoint is coming from the this is the same endpoint port seven thousand seven hundred. I'm just setting up, telling the client this is the endpoint. Every time I ask you to do something, go to that endpoint. Right uh, now, what I have is some view stuff here, and let's see if the binding is working. I always worry about the binding. Yeah, it's working. So I'm searching and it's adding stuff here, right? And the client is ready. You see them, right? Now, how do we add data to this search engine? To this, uh, I have a client, but where, where, where's, where's, where's the data? Where's the search? Where's, where's everything stored? Now, if you remember, uh, I created. Sites uh, learning, yeah. When I installed MediSearch, it actually downloaded the executable here, and there's a directory called data. This is where all the indexes and the data lives. This is where it uh, stores all of its information, uh, and this is the MediSearch client, and this is my view application, right? So, the way search engines work, you're gonna create something called index. Index, if you want to compare it to databases, it's it's like a table, you know. In MySQL, we call it a table. It has a bunch of records. It has a specific schema. Uh, search engines have indexes where you can store a certain type of information. Let's say a recipe. This is the recipes index. This is uh, um, the ingredients index, and so on. And each record on the index is called a document. We call it a record in MySQL, but here it's called a document, right? Uh, how do we co create an index? First, we need to create a table or an index. We can do it uh, with with a with an API call, and I already made a Postman collection, where um, I listed the most popular actions. This is where we list the indexes. Basically, just slash index on the on my on my uh, on my search. Hit send, and I don't have any indexes, so we need to create one. We're gonna go to the create index endpoint. Basically, post to the indexes. We have to give it a unique name. It's called the recipe. This is the index name. And the primary key. The primary key is all the records or the, or, or, or the documents on this index must have this key. This is like the ID of the records, right? We're going to call it the recipe ID. You can call it ID, whatever. Right? I'm going to send this. As you can see, it immediately gives me a response. If I go back to indexes, I have now recipes index. I can create, I don't know, ingredients index and then let's say ingredient ID. Right? Go back to indexes. Now I have two index. I can store data in here and here, right? When I search, I have to specify which index I'm searching in. I cannot combine indexes, right? Um, in, uh, how can I list the, the records in, in such an index, in, in an index? We can go to this endpoint, indexes, slash the index name, in this case recipes, and then documents. I don't have any recipes right now, so I made, I prepared an endpoint where I can actually just seed some recipes. I'm seeding five recipes. Basically, I'm posting to the same endpoint, the documents on this recipe, on this uh, index. I'm seeding five recipes. And look at the keys here. Recipe ID must match the index. Look here. Uh, it must match the primary key. It's recipe ID. Right? And then the title. We can add any data, description, ingredients, whatever data you want. But for simplicity, I'm just keeping just the title. Seeding five recipes. I'm going to send it. And it's successful. Let's go back to documents and see. Right, wonderful. I have data in my in my store. Now we go back to view. Let's make uh, let's make it here, right? Let's let's make an interface. Um, let's call it recipe bank, right? Because that was we doing what we're doing. Um, what I'm going to do now is every time the user types in a key here, we want to search in 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 my in my yeah. So I think the best way to do it is it watch Anthony, it watch is it method, or let's watch there like this right, and then we watch the query, right, and then so every time the user types in a letter or anything, I'm gonna query my my my, my search engine, right? I'm gonna just call a um, function called search and pass it 
the keyword. This is the user inputted keyword, right? Um, but I have to now create this function. Uh, so I'm going to just make methods and then search. Takes a term, takes a search term, keyword, or keyword, whatever. But here, in this search method, we're, we're going to use the client. We can use many search client to search in the indexes. And the way it works, we can just access the client, which was already initiated on mount, and then say, from the recipes index, find me this keyword, right? And then when you find it, uh, just store it in, where do we want to store it? In results. Let's have it here. Let's store, let's keep uh, an empty results. Uh, what do you call these? Variables? What do you call them? Variables. <laughs> Make it an array. Array? All right. Uh, so as soon as I get the results back from my search, store them in this results, give it a store the results in in the results. Uh, and I think it's uh, where the results are in, 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 the, in many search, they store it in a key called hits. So I'm going to just directly uh, store the hits. Right, let's see if this works actually. Um, let's go to the view app and then search for chicken. All right, so I just search ch, and I have already have five results here. Let's open it. I see, yeah, I got I got some results here. It's matching butter chicken curry, and good, it's working. Let's have it on the interface now. Uh, make an unordered list, and say for every one of my result, result in results. Anthony, I'm sorry if I'm butchering JavaScript right now. Yeah, you're doing fine. I'm doing fine. All right. Uh, so I'm going to just get the results and the result in this case is just the recipe object and it's exactly the schema you see in your database in. It's recipe ID and recipe title. So I'm just going to give it the title and now it should just check in. There we go. We have some results, right? And it's super fast. Um, now it's super fast because my, 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 my database just have five records but even if you have millions of records, it will be in within milliseconds uh, you'll get, you get results and it's, you know, uh, typo tolerant. Let's say that. Let's me start prongs. Prongs. Oh, that's that. No word. It's not so much typo tolerant, but that's a prong. Let's me type chicken. There we go. Uh, can chicken, we see the chicken, data? chicken. Uh, yes, you can see. Um, it is stored. You mean with this endpoint? It's stored just like that, just flat. It's by index. It's just a. Uh, an array of objects. And the file is then find somewhere. Like, what is the database? Yeah, I, I know. I understood what you mean. It's somewhere here. This is where the index is. It's in this. It's, it's in this format. Yeah. So the client, this this executable, can understand it, right? So basically, there is no actual database. So it's all the documents and the files. It's yeah. That's the one. Right. Um, what's next? Let's have a form now where we can add. Uh, recipes. Let's say this is a different page. I'm gonna commit a big sin of creating a table, right, Anthony? <laughs> what are you trying? Uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, make a form. So what I'm gonna do is have an input. I'm gonna bind it to new name. I'm just gonna new name, and let's have a button. So every time a user clicks this button, it will add a new recipe. Add and then add. Right. Let's just add placeholders just for fun. Placeholders, uh, new recipe name, and set a placeholder here. Search recipes. Right. Uh, first, we need to declare this. All right. Let's make it empty. And what else I need to declare? I need to I create this function. Right. What I did so far is I just added this form. So if I want to add a new recipes, click add. It should add it to, to my recipe bank. And so I, I'll be able to search it here, right? And I'm going to do the same. Every time user clicks this button, we're going to go to the method, get my client. The client does everything. And again, you have to specify which index. And then the method is add documents. You can, there is no method to add a single document. The way it works is you give it multiple documents and add it all at once. And if they are duplicate by um, keys, it will replace it. Uh, there are you no, know, what, what, were, what were the identifier? Recipe ID, right? So recipe 
ID. This should be unique. And the title, this is the title, will be whatever the user typed, right? Mm -hmm. And then after we add it, we want to just clear whatever the user typed. Just clear up some stuff. But here, I need a way to generate a unique ID. What I'm going to do is just get use the same name and just remove spaces because spaces are not cool in, in keys, right? Uh, and that's it. So user clicks add. We will go to the client, tell it in the recipe index, add all of these recipes. Now I'm adding just one recipe, but in reality, we, we can literally just add as many recipes as you want, bulk adding, right? And, and then just reset the user input. Let's try this. Let's do Swedish meatballs add. Nothing happened, but the thing is cleared. So if I search Swedish meatballs, it's right there. Not this. Mm -hmm. Swedish meatballs. Uh, <laughs> you can see it was added to my to my to my search immediately, right? If I went to use the endpoint, uh, the documents, you can see Swedish meatballs is added, and this is the unique identifier, which used to be numbers and and so on. Uh, right, and we just made a recipe bank. We can add it to HelloChef website right now. <laughs> um, right. Search. Yeah. Um, one thing to notice uh, or to note on many search website, they compare to the alternatives. They actually gives you the, the pros and cons of using Millie Search against you know Elastic Search. Elastic is an open search, but it's it's you know pretty advanced. Uh, Elastic Search supports huge data sets. Millie Search, what we said is easy tool to, to deploy a typo tolerant search bar. So it doesn't deal, it shouldn't deal with a huge data set. It sh Millisearch should not be your main data store. You should not you know, store all your suppliers, ingredients, stuff like, no. Just the stuff you want the users to search, which basically are ingredients and, and recipes. Um, they compare themselves with Algolia. They, 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 Millisearch was actually inspired by Algolia. And one of the uh, platforms they compare this themselves with is TypeSense. TypeSense was another very interesting. I was debating whether to d demonstrate TypeSense or MeliSearch. I just went with MeliSearch, it's easier. But TypeSense is another open source, free search engine, but they do have a hosted service if you want to pay and they will host everything for you and stuff, right? But MeliSearch is a very you know good, super, super fast, a lot of SDKs, open source and easy to use. And as you can see, I spend most of the time actually writing JavaScript and almost no time setting up like setting up the the, 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 the search. The last thing I want to add, now you noticed I was searching, this is the search endpoint. Uh, in, in the client, when I do search, where is the search? This search method, it's basically hitting this endpoint and passing a query here, right? That's that's what it's doing. See I have some chicken here. And the way we search is by a get method. Now this is not good if you are hosting your search engines on some service. It will be open. Anyone can make a, a get request, start consuming your resources and stuff. So what they do, what they did is there's two ways to search. Get, get is kind of the, the development way for development experiment and everything. There's a post on the same endpoint, but this would require a key, an API key. So it, you would generate a secret, it's not paid, you would generate a secret, add a new server, and then with, with the client, with the post request, you can hide the such keys, and it, it, it allows caching if you use the, the, post, uh, the post endpoint, so it will, give, it will deliver the results faster. So what we did now, we used the get request because I didn't want to set up keys and stuff and for, for security. The last thing, the very last thing I want to add is that if you actually went to this endpoint on the browser, they act, they give you an interface, and we didn't have to do any of you stuff. They just give you an interface. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> search, search something. All right, something. We don't have results, but let's search for chicken. There you go, chicken. With yeah. Typo. Yeah. So highlighting. The reason I wanted to show this last because you know, remember I said it's full of features. They the, the highlighting is one of the features. It tells you. The keyword you search matches exactly specifically where in, 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 your, in your article. So you can use styles to highlight, okay, the keyword matched with this. But then there's many other features like sorting and so on. And if you look here to this drop down, I have those are my tables or indexes. Remember I created ingredients index, but I didn't add any records. And then I have the recipes index where all my records are. And, uh, it seems you can create an API key directly from here. I didn't click it, but... Uh, yeah, you have to go to documentation. 
but that is my research. 